Hi there, this is Thomas Ellenberg coming to you again from Waikiki, Honolulu, Honolulu, Hawaii. There you see the city lights out there. Uh, and I am uh, making this open letter or video letter via YouTube to uh, my hero, Shirley MacLaine. Uh, Shirley MacLaine has been a bright light for me for many, 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 many years. Uh, she has represented someone who is uh, on a spiritual path, who is not afraid to share her spiritual findings with America, not afraid to go out on a limb, which is why I love this book so much. She's not afraid to talk about the untouchable subjects like the presence of UFOs and intergalactic communications that uh, she talks about in her wonderful new book Saging While Aging which I would highly recommend that everyone get and read. I just finished reading it. I would like to talk a little bit about how Shirley MacLaine is uh, an icon for me. Someone who is waking up, who doing her spiritual work to wake up from the cultural hypnosis uh, that we are all under here in America and in most of the world actually. Um, and I would like very much to send her my book which I believe is a piece of the puzzle. I know that Shirley is on a spiritual quest to put together pieces of a puzzle like a kaleidoscope she finds a piece here, she finds a piece there in her book Out on a Limb. She finds a piece called Reincarnation. She finds a piece called The Existence of Atlantis. She, and later on in El Camino, she finds a piece called The Civilization of Lemuria and the Separation of the Sexes. She talks about dream analysis. She introduced in her wonderful film a friend of mine, Kevin Ryerson, uh, who was one of the very first trans channelers to go really public. She introduced that whole idea to the American psyche in her miniseries Out on a Limb. In so many ways, she's been a groundbreaker and a trailblazer, a true American in the real cosmic sense of it. She talks a lot about the founding fathers and the American dream in her latest book and I have to say I totally agree with her. I grew up in the 40s and 50s when uh, we all liked Ike. America had just defeated the Nazis. It seemed as if America was the light and hope of the world. It felt as if we had our rights, the Bill of Rights and the Constitution, at least most of us. I know that later on uh, that had to be expanded to include many other minority groups, women, gay rights, uh, African Americans. We all know that it's taken a while for the American dream to open up to all groups. But the founding fathers that she talks about in her book, Saging While Aging, were metaphysical and mystical men and their wives, women. And they knew that America was a cosmic dream. They knew that it was God's dream. They felt that it was an idea literally coming to them, being downloaded to them from um, divine dimensions, uh, offering the people of planet Earth something that had never been given before, at least in modern times, or recorded history, and that's actual freedom for the individual, for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It's so simple. A geographical place, America, was going to be created uh, and uh, it was going to be a geographical location where people could actually live and be free and as Joseph Campbell says, follow your bliss. So what I'd like to do is send Shirley, I'd like to send you a copy of my book, Uncle Tom's Classroom, How One Public School Teacher Awakened His Students to the Cosmic Super Self Within. This is a true story of how I, first of all, uh, let me go back a little bit. Uh, I started teaching in the Peace Corps following Kennedy's invitation, not ask what you, 
ask not what you can do, what your country can do for you, ask what your, you can do for your country. So I joined the Peace Corps, went into the Teacher Corps, then went into a lifetime of teaching, taught every grade, every subject from kindergarten all the way up through eighth grade for 35 years, more than 35 years, only to discover, like Neo in the Matrix, that the school system while in its ideal is a wonderful system and there are m thousands of wonderful educators especially after no child left behind became a dictatorship for the military industrial complex it became a dictatorship for a materialistic capitalistic mindset and it basically ended freedom of speech in the classroom it turned us all into Uncle Toms. It turned parents, students, administrators, teachers, everybody was turned into Uncle Toms to serve the agenda of the state mandated curriculum, which was a materialistic curriculum that totally ignored the spiritual cosmic depths of children that ignored the multidimensional truth of their cosmic beingness. And so I had to write this and uh, it is available on my website, UncleTomsClassroom.com. It is also available f through Ex Libris, Barnes and Nobles, and Borders.com. Uh, and I would just like to find a way to send this to Shirley as a thank you, because in her book, Saging While Aging, she talks about how there was an attempt to upgrade education, to make education more cosmically true during the 50s, especially during Eisenhower after Roswell. And there was a decision made that, uh, dis that education should be controlled by the federal and state governments and not opened up. And it has, over the years, closed down more and more and more. So as I've said, it's become more of a brainwashing institution than a place for open minds, for children's minds to open, to be opened and to allow them to explore themselves. What I did in my classroom was I gave them freedom. I gave them freedom of speech. I gave them freedom of discourse, debate. I let them read every Bible in the world. I let them study quantum physics. Einstein's theory of relativity, string theory. I let them debate all kinds of philosophies and psychologies. And we're talking middle school students and they all came up with the same discovery that inside of them, they have a cosmic super self. They know it, they knew it, they discovered it because it was in them and they felt it percolating up to the point that they learned all kinds of what we called superpowers. Anyway, I'm running out of time, and I would just like to invite you to help me get this book into the hands of my hero, Shirley MacLaine, and I want to thank her for being a teacher to all of us, to teach us to go out on a limb. Thank you, Shirley.